Hi and welcome back. Today uh, I'm going to talk about um, my Remington 700 bolt in particular and what uh, happened when I started shooting Hornady steel match rounds. Uh, a lot of you guys have used them in 308. They're a great round. Um, for the price you pay for them, for a factory ammo, they group really well. And uh, I think in euros they were something around uh, 56 euro I think for 50 so great for uh, the money you pay for them but I was finding I got an awful lot of um, soft strikes on the primers like a lot of you guys have um, and it was driving me mad now it didn't happen on any other any other uh, round but the the steel match would do it at the start before the gun was worn in I was getting half and half uh, then when it was worn in after about 50 shots I was getting oh maybe three out of ten would not um, fire and I have to raise the bolt and drop it again to get it to fire. Um, so I, I couldn't, um, I, w I wasn't feeling comfortable shooting them. It was very hard to get accurate because you, it, was, it was always in the back of my mind, like will it fire, won't it fire, will I have to do it again? Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, I decided to fix it. So what I did was I did some research online and I found uh, a company that did uh, upgraded springs and was looking at either lighter firing pins or spring combos or all that stuff. But I ended up getting a wolf uh, spring. Now, uh, the wolf spring is five pounds heavier than the stock Remington. You need a couple of little tools to change it over, but um, it's it's not that hard to do at all. Let me just get the uh, standard Remington spring. And this is this original Remington spring, which is in it. Um, it, uh, it was doing the job on everything else except for the Hornady Steel Match and it seems to happen to a lot of you guys reading forum posts about them. So what I needed to buy was the upgraded spring which I got a Wolf spring. Um, as I said it was uh, five pounds heavier, it was the, the medium style. They do a standard one which is the same strength, a uh, heavier sp uh, medium spring which is that one and uh, heavier again. And I'll show you in a minute because it's actually in my bolt but I'm going to strip it out show you the difference between them and put it back in again. You do need uh, a tool for this. You're going to need um, a spring compressor and I got this when I ordered my spring. The spring was under ten dollars. This guy here was uh, I think about twenty dollars but I'm, I'm gonna use it again and I, my friends can use it and so it's, it's worth it. If you're good at machining you could easily do it yourself but the first thing you gotta do to uh, strip out your bolt is to uh, get it a couple of rotations is pull back the um, pull back the, uh, the firing pin that's in there at the moment the easiest way to do it is uh, use the corner of a table or a shoelace to pull back this here you just wrap it around here and pull it straight back and you got to pull it back uh, about um, about four millimeters enough you'll see a little gap that you stick your little soft metal slice in. Now you can get a tool for doing this, but um, I think it's it's not worth it since it's so easy to do anyway. So all you gotta do is get the edge of a table, pull down on it, and stick the soft little metal in it. You can see it's stuck in there in the gap. Now I don't know if that what that gap is for. I can't think of anything else that gap would be any good for. But what it does is it disengages the um, the pin from the little grooves here that sits in, so you can rotate it out. You want to rotate it all the way out. You get a good clean on your bolt as well doing this. And uh, here you can see the spring, and you can see the firing pin, and you can see the bolt shroud at the back and the cap. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get the tool. We're going to screw it into the back of it. You see how it works now in a second. You can see the the pin is going inside the rod, which you can twist. And put this in a couple of twists. You don't have to screw it all the way down. That's enough there now. And we're going to tighten this bolt up. And it's going to compress the spring inside the uh, the block. Our pin is falling out. Or not our pin, but our, our penny. And there's a little uh, metal pin up here. You can see it there. And what we're going to do is, my one just fell right out, but you just get a little... Um, three mil pin punch, knock it through. And you then simply uncompress your bolt, screw it the opposite way, and 
it should release from the the rear lock here. If it doesn't, you can give it a little tap with a, a nylon hammer or whatever you got like this, just to get it to separate out. Now mine's already separated, so I didn't have to do it, but the first time I did, and uh, it will come straight out the back. And you see the pinhole there. And you just keep going, and it'll uncompress the spring completely. And once that's done, I'll show you what it looks like. Surprisingly easy. I mean, once you have the tool, uh, it's just very straightforward. If you didn't have the tool, um, I don't know, here, there are these springs flying everywhere. So I'll spin it out and just screw out the end piece here. This, uh, the wolf spring is slightly longer than the Remington spring, so it doesn't fit perfectly in it. But there we go. So, that shreds out, pin is out, and the spring is out. So, you can see the difference in the two springs here. The, uh, the wolf spring, is a little bit longer it looks about five six millimeters um it's as i said five pounds heavier but uh the coils are also uh, a lot a lot uh thicker they're, i don't know a thousand two thousands bigger um so they're, they're obviously stronger as well as longer and uh since i've put in this um firing spring i have uh fired 150 rounds off um, steel match and not a single soft strike and uh, Even to show you I have two here. I hope you'll be able to see this. It's not the easiest thing in the world um, You can see I will try this one here has been hit twice with a hammer to make it go off This one here is with the new firing pin and you can see hopefully I'll try a smaller camera in a minute this guy here is deeper and slightly wider just because it, the impact was much heavier than this one, which was even hit twice to make it go off. I mean, if, if it's a failed strike, the first one, it's not even half that depth. It's it's, it's nothing like. Um, so it really does do the job. Now, I was thinking about getting one of those speed pins and all those guys that reduce your strike uh, time and, hope, and they say increases your accuracy and all this. But... Uh, some people were re saying that they were still getting soft strikes with the, the lighter firing pins, like the titaniums and such, just because they don't have as much um, uh, mass behind them when they uh, strike. So these guys, um, the original Remington pin is perfect with a, with a wolf spring. Um, now, if you are changing your firing pin, you can change it now. Uh, but you want to make sure that the protrusion on the far side of the bolt is exactly the same as you had before. Is it a custom bolt? You want to check it out but uh you get a, a calipers or my uh and stick it down the back there make sure protrusion is the exact same if it's too far um you could go in as far as uh, rupturing a primer if it's not far enough you're going to have a worse problem where you're not going to uh you're not going to get any solid strikes at all uh, but if you're using the same pin it doesn't matter so what we'll do is rebuild it real quick your new spring is going to go on your firing pin out of the way. It's going to go up inside the tool and it goes there's a hole up inside there, the rod here just go all, all up inside it and you get your shroud here push it in just screw a couple of threads in because it's a longer spring it's protruding a bit but um, it's still super easy to do, do, -do. <laughs> We just compress this in, get a turn or two out of it, and it's locked in. Now, the only thing that's fiddly about this is uh, bringing in a couple of turns. Like that, and you can compress this guy all the way up until we see the, the back of the firing pin coming out the back of the shroud. Now, what you need to do is you need to rotate the firing pin so that the, the hole through the back for the locking pin um, is... Uh, straight across the back of your bolt 90 degrees to the window you're looking down um, but you need to over rotate it about three or four degrees because when you uh, because you're twisting this and there's a spring in it, it is a tendency to roll backwards a couple of degrees when you stop twisting it I'll show you what I mean now in a second hopefully it'll go in first time 
Okay, so there's my pin, and you can tell it's it's not 90 degrees at the moment. So what we'll do, we'll get, and we'll line it up so as close and 90 as we can. Uh, get it a little bit of overturn, just because it's sprung and it'll rotate back on the end cap. So we'll tap with a hammer, line it up, and you should be able to drop in your spring. Or, sorry, you should be able to drop in your your pin. One thing you'll find that if you can't get the pin to drift all the way through, it's probably because the hole which was drilled uh, isn't completely in the center of the firing rod um, or the back of the, the cover. So just uh, to get the pin, take off the head, rotate the firing pin 180 degrees around uh, using the uh, punch or something, just rotate it so the holes are opposite. It should slide straight through then. Um, yeah, just like that. Once the pin is back in, you can release the tension off your spring, let it compress back, and what you want to do before you completely close it off, you want to get your little copper coin, put it back in this little slot on the side here, and finish off by letting the pressure off, which will then release, and you screw the whole tool off, And uh, there's your new bolt that's on there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put it back into the uh, the bolt body. Now because it's the same firing pin and a different bolt, it's still not going to affect the protrusion of the, the firing pin. So we're just going to put it back in, uh, screw it in, and um, you screw it all the way back, all the way in, and back to the notch. Uh, that that's with all Remingtons. You don't bring it to halfway down, all the way in, and then straight back to the first notch, and then you're good to go. So what you do then, you just take the pressure off on the table, move your little washer, and uh, you're good to go practice. There we go. So that's the bolt, all rebuilt. Now we're just going to cycle it in the gun here. I'm gonna get an empty. Empty, empty. There we go. And empty, three to eight. I'm gonna drop it in the chamber. I have no snap caps. Bolt is in. One thing I did notice after I changed this is the slightly more resistance um, on dropping the bolt, but I guess that's just the heavier uh, spring. It's not a big deal. I prefer it. It makes it feel a bit more uh, sturdy. And uh, it's very unlikely it's going to change your trigger pressure. You're good to go. And uh, hopefully you won't get any more uh, any more soft strikes on Hornady Steel Match or anything else. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a little competition. I have some bullets here that I want you guys to guess the uh, caliber. Um, you don't have to list, list it in any particular order, but uh, if you do it, oh, it'll be an easy one. There, uh, six bullets. Uh, when you guess right, I'll send you. Um, oh, I suppose the first person who, who guesses right, because it's not terribly hard. First person who guesses right in the comments, uh, just uh, put in all the six different calibers, and if you're correct, I will. Um, send you a 300 win mag bottle opener uh, which I do here myself and uh, good luck and I'll see you guys next time